Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final round of the 2020 PCS Open. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, along with our 2019 champion in Eagle McMahon and Eagle Overas Disc Golf Park. We're back, we're, we're here. Final round, and I'm looking forward to see how this shakes out. We have the best players on no in Norway on this card teeing off one more time, looking over the beautiful fjord, hole number one, par three, 124 meters. Sidearm, backhand, you'll probably see both from this card. You got uh, Pather and Canute, who are primarily backhand players. And uh, I forget who else is on the card, but we'll see in just a second. Yeah, we will. And this is uh, some of the card mates that we saw from the previous round, including Andreas, who uh, rounds out the card, and Stale, uh, who made a little bit of a charge at one point. We saw a lot of uh, volatility during that second round, actually. For sure. Okay, we got Canute. Okay, he's throwing a, a sidearm. He might have done this uh, the second round. Um so basically, like I said earlier, it's all about getting the right nose angle, pushing distance, but also, you know, not getting too aggressive and pulling it left. And Canute just throws a basic hyzer down there. He's not going to be in any real range of a birdie, but he'll have a pretty easy opportunity to just pitch up. And here we are seeing Stale also going with the forehand. Now, of course, the OB is on the right with the road, and there's a Mando that you have to make sure you navigate, but the other OB is on the left, and I feel like if you're going to bail out, bailing out right is probably better. For sure, and as you see, Stale felt, it looked like he sawed it off a bit too much, but he still hit that hillside, so it's pretty difficult to throw a sidearm out of bounds right unless you throw a completely errant shot. And Peter, I believe, has a mid-range, probably a rock in his hands. Peter has a very old-school style game. And what I mean by that, he likes throwing his T-Bird, rocks, AVRs. He's very good with his angle control. And as you can see here, he puts a good line on it. He's going to be just outside the circle, putting for his two. And it looks to be a gorgeous Sunday afternoon, a little bit of a light breeze. You see the PCS open flag blowing uh, as a headwind for them right now, but it looks otherwise like it's just a gorgeous day out there. And we got Andreas H. I, I may pronounce, try to pronounce his name later on the round, but I'm, I'm not willing to try quite yet. <laughs> you don't want to open with a bogey. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, so nobody necessarily parked. We'll see who's uh, who's going to get aggressive early on, though. Stale is just pitching up. No, Canute sits on this three-stroke lead. Um, what kind of game plan do you think we'll see out of him? Will he have to wait to see what others do? I think we'll, he'll have to wait to see what Stale uh stale is doing because he's his main competitor going this final round canute's known to be a, a very aggressive player so i know he'll probably lean towards that but as you can see he laid up there so he's uh he's golfing so to speak at the moment Peter has a, a good opportunity to convert and he does incredible opening bogey or birdie sorry oh, oh, wow. <laughs> i don't know what i was giving him there no i was i was thinking how he, he stepped that off for just a moment and kind of you know regained his thought and then clearly it paid off what a great birdie oh my gosh andreas throwing an amazing putt but just a centimeter too far to the right that could have stuck but unfortunately it didn't and uh, <laughs> Canute, wow, he was a lot further away than I thought on his layup. But he puts it in for his par. Barely squeaking it in. And here we've got Stale walking away with a par. Andreas probably feels a bit robbed after that putt. How mad can you be with this view, though? What are they going to do on hole two? You really can't. Par three, 104 meters, 
pretty much a straight shot with a little bit of a out of bounds on the right side if you pull a shot. Most of these guys, I imagine, will be throwing a fairway driver of sorts. First on the tee is Peter. And previous round, I remember him shanking it a little bit to the right. So let's see if he can correct on his mistake. I must comment and say that out of the three days, this looks like the nicest weather. It looks very mild. Sun is shining. Two previous rounds look pretty decent. Uh, not like last year when there was rain all the first day, but it's absolutely beautiful here today on the final round. Knutes is drifting left, but gets a little help to push him back in the fairway. Couldn't tell. It almost looked like a, a little slip off the tee there. I'm not sure if that is what I saw or not, but that's kind of what it looked like. Yeah, that's what I saw. Just a little bit of an early release from Knut. And it looks like Stale may have slipped even uh, a little bit. And he throws it up left, but he pushes enough distance that that retaining wall keeps him within putting range. So he'll have the opportunity to, to convert for a possible two. And kind of that low flip up again. And wow. Everyone's bouncing back into the fairway here. <laughs> I don't know if anyone could argue with that. Like no matter where you throw it, it wants to kick back into the fairway. Now this is a long look. Is this uh, somewhere out uh, mid, mid circle too? I'd say about, uh, you know, okay. I'm just going to commit to it for the rest of the, the round. I'm going feet. I can just go with feet. I can go me I can go meters off the tee when I'm gauging a you know whole length because it's a, a graphic there. Um and Pater right there puts in probably about a, a 45 footer. So great putt from Peter. Just inside of that for Stale. This looks like to be just about at circle's edge. He pulls it a bit right. Next up is Andreas, uh, and yeah. he gets one to stick. Yeah, I was going to say, is that a little makeup for the previous one? That one was low, could have easily came out, but the basket god said, hey, we'll give you this one. It definitely evened out, <laughs> that's for sure. Stale with a bit of a tester, but he converts for his par. Peter with back-to-back -back birdies and, uh, you know, Knut and Stale, the front runners of the event, starting off with two pars. So Peter, you know, if he keeps his foot on the gas and the trend continues for the two top guys, you know, he might be back in the game. Okay, we're on the hole three. Uh, par three, 96 meters, downhill shorter hole, ideally a forehand, but you can pretty much do whatever your heart desires. You might see some high backhand, straight putter shots, uh, but Peter will be up first. So he'll probably be lining up um, an overstable disc of sorts, throwing out to the right, fading back in. Of course, this is on the hillside. So my question to you would be, would you rather be just below the basket or just above the basket? Do you like the position Peter landed in? I wouldn't mind. Peter can be aggressive. I'd say uh, most of these guys, oh, that's a great shot by Andreas. Uh, as long as you're somewhat close, you sh these guys probably are going to feel confident uh, giving it a good bit at the basket. Oh, wow. Andreas just pushes way too far. Didn't really, uh, you know, from from the camera angle, it looked like a, a pretty good shot. Yeah, it just got up and kind of continued to slowly roll. So maybe, you know, maybe that even almost answers your question that when you come in a little bit high, if it catches edge, it could get up and then find itself rolling all the way down to the OB like his just barely did. And we see a, we see an overhand warm up here. <laughs> yep, stretching out all the the muscles and ligaments and. Voila, that looked pretty good from this angle, but it's rolling. That's just the problem with this green. It's very fast if you hit on the wrong angle or just get a bit unlucky. 
It looks like it finally stopped and he came up just short of the out of bounds. He's putting uphill, but bringing those trees into play. And what's crazy is he landed no more than what, five, five meters from the basket. And then it ended up rolling all the way down there. Andres is going to be forced to just pitch up and take his bogey. So Canute is in a position probably just outside the circle. And that's gone out of bounds. Uh, wow, that's a, that's a very, um, I'd say, bad mistake on Canute's part. You know, running it and then sailing it over the basket, out of bounds. Almost connects for the par, but he's going to be giving a stroke to Stale. Wow, that is uh, quite a turn here. And we, I mean, you want to talk about momentum. You want to talk about what Peter's thinking right now. He's just trying to chip away at these leads uh, that the two guys are in front of him. And he's three for three. I'm going to take the credit. Those are three birdies with the disc golf guy, AVRs, Casey AVRs that he's putting with right there. My logo on the top. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'm a little giddy about that. Watch those putts go in. Well, the, the mojo you gave him is working. So <laughs> his scorecard's all green. No one else can say the same thing. So Peter's got the hot hand at the moment. And look at that. He's now within three after the first three holes. Keep in mind, everyone, there are 20 total holes at this course. So we'll see uh, how that's going to, uh, if that's going to be enough time for him to try and hunt them down. But here we are looking at hole four. Yep, on the hole four, kind of a gauntlet style shot. OB on the right side, really looking just to put mid-range fairway driver as straight as possible. Maybe a little bit of fade to the left to, to get away from the out of bounds. Peter will have the box here. And we've mentioned it before, they actually pushed back this T uh, and, and built a T in the entire platform deck that it has, but they pushed it back as well, making this hole a little bit tougher and just on a heater to get opened uh, for this round here is uh, Peter. What a great shot. Yeah, that was very clean, a fully committed shot. You know, didn't have any uh you know troubles of hitting uh, an early obstacle i think he will be around circle's edge on his next shot but great shot nonetheless and maybe even more important as yale's is just a bit high more important is he's immediately putting more pressure on the two leaders he's just thrown a a perfectly executed shot right up the middle and he can kind of be thinking to those guys, hey, uh, I, I'm here to play today, and you guys are going to have to keep up with me at this rate. Absolutely. I mean, to start the round, there was there was almost there was virtually no threat of Peter, but now he's he's knocking on both their doors. But Canute with a great rebound there. He's going to be the closest, probably the best shot that we've seen on any round so far. Stole is just going to be laying up. Andreas from a jump putt approach distance. Pushing it a bit long. Yeah, this slopes down at where Andreas is standing. It kind of slopes down behind the basket just a little bit, but it's enough to make you think about it. And there's going to be Peter's first miss. From a from a decent distance, though. Yeah, and as they were watching, we'll have to see exactly where that finished. It looked like it got away just a little bit. Might have taken a goofy roll uh, after hitting the basket. We'll see where he's at. This looks pretty manageable, though. Yeah, I remember playing with Peter two out of the three rounds last year, and one thing I noticed about him is he's a great putter. He didn't miss very often. Thanks, Peter, for making that, or else you'd have made, made, made it bad. <laughs> I was holding my breath for the exact same reason. Uh, 
I, I remember Peter in the after parties as he was sharing his uh, a notebook. He carries around a notebook and keeps a lot of thoughts and does a lot of writing in that. And uh, whether he's had some adult beverages or not, he's uh, he's always writing in that notebook. And uh, just such a such an amazing human that I really enjoyed catching up with and uh, hanging out with last year. And Canute uh, says, "All right, guys, I'm I'm ready to turn this around." He picks up the birdie here on four. On to hole number five, 90 meters with a little bit of elevation gain. You got to navigate this uh, this uh, early tunnel, then it opens up, but you have some out of bounds uh, in this uh, this little pond slash you know wall area. And then up top, that's where the basket lies. So these guys are just going to be looking to you know hit the initial gap, but with with some height fading to the left and uh, hopefully find themselves in balance and near the basket. And Canute not really wanting to flirt with that, le that out of bounds at all, but coming up a bit short. Very easy to find yourself in that OB pond and these guys uh, doing everything they can to avoid it. That's a good shot. Uh, it's going to be left side, and he's he's going to be putting at, at a relatively flat spot uh, where the pin is, as opposed to if he was coming up short or maybe went long. So being off to the left, I feel like will give you the flattest putt. Yeah, and especially where Peter's at. As long as he's giving himself looks right now, that's pretty much all he can ask for. Um, and, you know, just – doing his best to stay out of trouble to continue to push, put pressure on the, on the front runners. Andreas seems to have hit early. Yep. Not able to make it out of the gap. This should be a pretty easy routine uh, up and down for him though. He's got a good clean look at the basket, just a matter of speed. And that's a little bit deep. Uh, he, he'd be about circles edge coming back at it. It's really easy to push it deep, especially where he he was, he was because, you know, you don't want to leave it short and potentially find yourself in that out of bounds. Knut with the the aggressive run as he's known for. <laughs> yeah, he was certainly going for it. He wasn't just trying to lay it up next to the basket to walk away with the three. It's a good par save by Andreas. Not too often you see someone quite this far left uh, up here at the near the basket on the pin height. Peter not getting it high enough. No, he really wanted that one. Stole for a birdie. Good job by him. Yeah, we'll it's only this... one stroke now. One stroke between leader and second place. A little bit of work for Canute to walk away with the par, but uh, Staley, like you said, he's got uh, four pars and gets his first birdie on the card. And we'll see if that uh, maybe ignites something as we move to the one of the most gorgeous holes in all of disc golf. I feel like we could pause it and just stare at that for 10 minutes. Absolutely. And the most gorgeous hole in disc golf is hole number six, par three, 94 meters. And you got to throw it through two swords sticking out of the ground. Uh, the gates of Valhalla. So triple Mando clowns mouth. Really about, you know, just committing to your shot. Uh, there's some people, some people lay up for this. So there's no, there's really no shame in doing that. But uh, I imagine that most of these guys here are going to be going for the green. Oh, just it's... sneaking in from that right side. Yeah, there's really no harm in that shot. You know, of course you want to be closer, but you you didn't miss the Mando, so you can't really complain. All right, Canute really needs to execute this shot. And looks like he pulled it right. And 
he has missed the Mando. That's the biggest mistake on that hole. Since you're throwing downhill, it's really it's really hard to throw on a high serve, which a lot of these guys do with a more flippy disc to hit their gap. You don't really have enough time to get a hyzer flip shot, so you're forced to throw it flat, and that makes it so you pull the disc right out of the hand. Well, and hitting that right sort of upright uh, and then still making it through the Mando is Peter, and he's going to have a putt from that left side. Let's we'll see if this just squeaks in. That's a great shot by Andreas. <laughs> Plays the left side, works it to the right, kicks a little kick off of a rock. That's going to be super close for his birdie. Canute from the drop zone. And if Stalley lays up, they're going to find them themselves tied. But no. <laughs> he's going for the run. Yeah, he almost uh, cashed in for the birdie. Now, here we are. We'll see if Peter's... Putt can get back on track. He's missed the last two birdie looks, albeit close. He just needs a little bit of magic from the previous round when he threw in from the drop zone. And he cashes it in. I really like uh, the way Peter's looking. Even with those two previous misses, he's been giving himself looks on every hole. Yeah, just a bit low on the previous hole. And then uh, back on the hole before that, he had a good run at it. So like you're saying, he's put himself in position every single hole thus far. And he's here applying some pressure, just two strokes off the leaders that are now tied up in Stolle and Canute. And <laughs> a little uh, action as the gallery and the rest of the crew moves around the course. Here's hole seven. Hole seven, we got the first par four on the course. 205 meters. Really the first hole that you get to open up on, throw a, a big righty hyzer. Uh, ideally, playing more of the left side of the fairway is uh, a better idea opposed to pushing it straight, just because you won't really, uh, you'll, you'll have out of bounds on the right side. Um, if you get too far into the tree line, but you won't really be able to attack the green if you're too pinched up against the trees. So uh, I know it's been a bit of a problem for our players to kind of navigate the left side early on. So let's see if they can uh, learn from their previous rounds. A little extra dancing on the tee. I'm not sure if, again, if there was a slip or uh, if he just felt like he pulled it a little bit, but. Uh, that's in perfectly fine position. It's going to be tough to attack from there for birdie, though. Andreas, that's a very good position. I really like where he ended up. That will leave him uh, a few different options to uh, get to the green from where he's at. Stole puts it up high, looks to be pushing back trees a bit. It does. He is going to be pinched up on the right side. We saw Peter, I believe, previous round in a similar spot, and he actually had a gap so he could cut the corner out over the, the out of bounds, and he got his birdie. We'll see if uh, Stole can probably if he can uh, do something similar. And on um, just pretty much a pure hyzer line there, getting past Andreas's shot, we see Canute probably in really good position to attack from there. And this is, this is going to have to be a layup by Peter, isn't it? I, I'm not sure. Potentially. It looks like he's... Yeah, that's definitely a layup. And that's pretty much all you could choose to get aggressive, but you know, there's no harm in doing that. Put yourself in a position to get uh, an easy, easy par on the, this par four. Andreas goes over top. I didn't really see it come down. Yeah, and we didn't see an OB indicator. So uh, although it got maybe caught up in those final trees, 
Uh, it was inbounds, and it looks like Knut's going to take the exact same line and try and go up and over everything. What do you think about that play? I really like it. Back in 2019, I did something similar. I I was in a position uh, like Knut, and my play of choice from there was uh, a grenade over top. So, you know, that gives uh, the eagle the eagle thumbs up that play. <laughs> And that's one reason, as you're seeing right there, the OB pawn, you can only be so aggressive if you're out of position off after your first throw and why Peter really didn't try and bite off anything more because if you push or cut roll with some kind of a crazy shot, you could find yourself in the OB pond and instead he's just going to kind of pitch over. Yeah, good job from Peter there. Uh, he might have been contested with a, a few trees in his in his line of view, but it looks like he got an Anheuser up and around. And Stale, maybe tickle the chain or two. I couldn't quite tell, uh, but you know that's that's a play right there—a layup and then a run a jump put at the basket. That's I like it. And here's Andreas, who we said just came in just inside the OB, and what a great putt! That's a uh... That's a good way to walk away with a birdie here on the par four. Flex it on him. I like it. <laughs> All right. Canute here to get a birdie. And he will regain his solo lead. Maybe that'll give him a little bit of a jump start uh, and, uh, you know, get back on track from where kind of the, you know, the a few rough holes that he's had so far. I love Stale in the background, just chilling, uh, watching the action, uh, enjoying a little bit of the sunshine. <laughs> As you said, he'll be down back down by a single stroke deficit. We got a new tee, different look here at another par four, hole number eight. Hole number eight, 171 meters. In previous years, the, the tee pad was just up a little bit more and a little bit to the right. And you could take a big hyzer if you had the, the arm for it, which a few guys did and chose to. Uh, and there was the eagle was potentially in play, but no longer. Now you have to navigate through a semi-technical fairway to a landing zone. Uh, and throwing uh, another shot to have a look at the birdie. Andreas saws it off just a little bit. Obviously, I mean, uh, we're stating the obvious in that you need to hit the fairway here. Uh, now, how much you have to take off is really... Uh, the question, but just getting it up the center of the fairway to even giving yourself a look is so key here. And uh, looks like things are warming up even a little bit more as Peter sheds a layer. Yeah, and this this PCS Open compared to last year, I believe is even a little bit later in the year. Uh, I don't know the exact dates, but uh, I know for a fact that I was playing the PCS Open within the, I think the first week of September. And this was maybe, a, you know, one to two weeks later after, uh, you know, the dates in 20, 2019. Yeah, I think it was one week later, ultimately, is what it ended up being. And obviously, uh, just to timestamp it for those that don't maybe recall at some point that this was in the year of COVID. And so uh, someone like yourself and myself and a bunch of others that would uh, otherwise have been in attendance weren't able to go this year. So uh much more local flavor to the event. Absolutely. Peter doesn't get quite far enough on his first shot to have that 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 fairway. So he's forced to take a big hyzer over the top and he gets distance, but I don't think he's going to be anywhere uh, near putting range for uh, for his third shot. Kind of a awkward step out there by Andreas uh, to try and push himself up the fairway. 
Doesn't seem like he was probably comfortable with throwing a forehand. So now we're going to see a little more creativity by Stale. And that'll work. That, that will work great right there. <laughs> Oh, wow. You know, it's starting to look like we might be getting a little bit of a battle here between uh, Stale, Knut, and, you know, maybe even Peter. I like it. Yeah, and so as you mentioned, it was tough to kind of gauge exactly where Peter landed now. It's also tough to see just how much that's obstructing him, but what a run. Looks like he surprised the cameraman just a bit. <laughs> Is it? Just hits off the right side of the rim. So giving it a good look. You know, you've been talking about that. How every hole here, he's had a look at birdie. And, and that one, he kind of manufactured it. And uh, he's not going to lose any ground to Canute at this point. Assuming he makes this, of course. He does so. Then next up will be Stale for... A close distance birdie putt. Ooh, <laughs> it looked like it wanted to bounce out. I think that's what he's probably uh, smirking about there as it almost came back at him. But he's going to walk away with the lone birdie here on uh, hole number eight. And we've got just two holes, two holes left to go in our front ten. And hole nine got tougher, didn't it? Yeah, hole number nine, 121 meters. Plays essentially as an island hole. Uh, the grass we are flying over right now with the drone is all out of bounds until you get to the bridge. So got to make it on the island or else you go to the drop zone. Uh, the tee pad was moved back from the previous year, making it a little bit longer. So this is a, this is a pretty difficult hole to get a birdie on because you really need to pure the the gap with hyzer and a good amount of velocity and it looks like stale might have done that he gets up there with good distance but still a bit short it's kind of an interesting shape because you have a, a tree branch that forces you to keep the shot low but then you throw into an upslope so it's really difficult to get as enough distance to get to the basket. Well, and I'm going to spoil it just a little in that this actually played as the single hardest hole on the entire weekend. When all the stats and scores were put together, this was the single hardest hole relative to par uh, as it averaged. Um, uh, oh, a correction. I'm sorry. This was right in the middle, averaging 3.6. So not quite the single hardest. Uh, I was getting ahead of myself, but still a very difficult hole to get a, a birdie on. Absolutely. Peter looks like he got a really, oh, that, I mean, that's perfect. <laughs> it's not really any, it's, it's just a really perfect shot. Uh, it's just really a tap in and more importantly, keeping the pressure on as he sits three, three strokes back in the lead. Andreas coming in with a bit of heat. Stays in bounds, though. And Canute from downtown. That is huge for him. Take another look at the replay. Man, a little body English and just cashes it in. All right, all right. So getting a little ahead of myself here as we're talking about Peter, you know, trying to pick up a stroke and, and hunt down the leaders and Canute. Knut's uh, smile says otherwise. Good for Knut. You know, a little bit of a roller coaster for him thus far. But, you know, that might be the, the jump start he needs to start putting the hammer down. Stale with a little, he was a little pinched. And so it uh, looks like he's just going to be. Uh, Trying to finish out with a par. We see the par by Andreas. Hole nine, as I mentioned actually earlier, played uh, as 3.6 throughout the weekend, right around in the middle. I was getting ahead of myself. Hole 10, the next hole, 
the single most difficult hole on the course relative to par, uh, as it averaged 5.4 as a par four. So a stroke and a half above par. And it's a new one for us, Eagle. Yeah, hole number 10, 228 meters. And really, you know, to the naked eye, it doesn't seem that that tricky, but I guess that there is a just a, a lot of out of bounds. And with the, the Norwegian fall weather, there there's wind, there's rain. So, you know, you never know where your disc might land. Uh, but ideally, just putting up a, a straight to a slightly overstable driver, trying to get out into the middle is uh, is what you're hoping to do on a hole like this. Well, and because this hole is so new, you can see that it's not, you know, a, a lush green fairway just yet. And it's not, you know, all grass covered. So sometimes being a little bit out of position might also then uh, translate into uh, having some slippery footing because it's muddy or something like that. So those are things they have to worry about out here for sure. And just sliding off the wood chips and into the OB area, Canute finds himself uh, out of bounds off the tee shot. He gains all of that distance, but the last three or four feet of that is uh, is going to cost him a stroke. Yeah, it seems like he put a, a good amount of power and he just crawled out of bounds. So if I had to guess, that out of bounds is probably a little over 400 feet off the tee. Peter gives it a little bit better height. And he will be, you know, on the quote fairway. And from where he's at, I imagine he's going to go for a big spike hyzer, high hyzer type of shot. Yeah, and you saw him push, you know, quite a ways past where uh, we just watched Canute's land. So definitely putting a good move on it. Stall, it looks like he's lining up the big Anheuser flex shot smash. It's got to sit down. And he ends up out of bounds. Maybe just trying to bite off a little too much. Yeah, these next two holes, uh, Terry mentioned this in the previous round. We weren't here uh, for, we weren't here to play these uh, in 2019. They're, they're new holes. Uh, so, you know, I can't, we can't really uh, comment with a bunch of knowledge. <laughs> um, but, you know, as it looks, there's there's plenty of out of bounds for 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 everyone on this hole. <laughs> it is to be found everywhere, and then also you see Canute dealing with uh, looking into the sunshine, and we'll see just how far he can push up the fairway. It looks like he's going to be kind of right center fairway. We'll see how much those trees come into play. Similar distance here for Canute. Canute throwing a shot with a, quite a bit of power. Yeah. I think he'll have a he'll have a look. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was stability or if he just really missed his line, but it looks like he's gonna be short and left. Uh maybe he got to pin high, but a little bit short and left. And that one looks like it's gonna be uh what I believe is also a little bit short and left. Peter ended up having the best drive of the group. So let's see if he can take advantage of it. And he does. That is, that's great from Peter. Yeah. He's looking at no more than three or four meters Next to the pin for a tap-in, or what should be a tap-in birdie. And Canute is outside the circle. And he'll be a... He's going to have a bogey coming for himself. Looking at a potential two-stroke swing between him and Peter. First, Andreas is going to see if he can uh, get a little work done on the par four. Well, 
Peter in a short sleeve shirt is just is making me wish I was there. You know, <laughs> perf that perfect fall weather where you know it's just a little bit too warm for a jacket, but just overall perfect weather in Norway. I don't think it really gets much better than this. Now, looking forward to it. As of right now, we're uh, you know all things COVID. Uh, looking at uh, being at the PCS Sula Open in 2021. And as we're going to clear out, we want to thank you guys for joining us. Leave a comment. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, but leave a comment. That'll make you eligible to win a disc. And with just 10 holes left to play, we'll take a quick look that Canute, he, <laughs> Peter's trying to hunt him down as Canute holds on to a very, very slim lead. And Peter and Stale right there. We'll be back with this card in just a few moments. Eagle, we'll see you for the final 10. Sounds good.